Hello and welcome to another manga spotlight, I guess. Uh, I mean, this is a manga, but it's based off of a comic book. <laughs> so I've been trying to get into Spawn. Like, I've always had a fascination with the character, and I've played his video games. I watched the old HBO series way back when. Uh, I don't really remember much of it now, but I watched it, like, when I was a kid. Um, and I thought, you know what, like... The, seeing him in the new Mortal Kombat game kind of got me interested in the character again. So I decided maybe I should get into actually reading the series. And while looking up information about Spawn, I found out that there was a manga about it. And I was like, well, I, I, I freaking love manga. Let's do this. So uh, I'm kind of surprised that there's actually a manga on Spawn. Uh, sometimes uh, Japanese will like do a manga or an anime off of a comic book series. Uh, I know they did one for... Blade, uh, they did an anime for Blade. They did an anime for like Wolverine and one of the other Marvel characters, I believe. They did an anime series on Witch Blade, which is really surprising. Like of all the series that you're gonna do a, a, an anime on, Witch Blade is gonna be one of them. It was actually surprisingly good. So imagine my shock when they when I found out that they did a manga for Spawn. So this is Shadows of Spawn. This um, has a brand new character, brand new lead. But it does have some uh, some of the old characters. Well, some of the characters from the Spawn series actually shows up. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. Like first off, we got this pretty cool artwork. I, I was looking up some of the stuff on um, some of the information on the the manga, and it seems like it kind of got mixed reviews, and some people kind of um, crapped on the art style. But I thought the art style was actually really good. At least for like an old '90s manga, '90s or early 2000s. I can't. I don't remember when this came out, but um, I think it's because maybe you have like comic book reviewers uh, from like the '90s, 2000s, and they're reviewing manga. And back then, comics and manga didn't really have much of a crossover audience like you do now. So you have basically comic book enthusiasts uh, reviewing the artwork and comparing it to the artwork from the comic. And it's like anyone who knows manga and comic books have drastically different styles. Except for nowadays, I guess. Nowadays you have a lot of a lot of the uh, garbage comic books are basically trying to be manga-esque and just failing really badly. I don't know. It could just be me. There have been very few series that uh, of American manga style that are actually good. Like anytime I see like American manga style it's always just really bad <laughs> and cringe inducing um but yeah uh this isn't uh, as far as i know this isn't uh, an american manga this is actually from japan uh so here's our main character this is um ken kurosara like the most cliche name i can think of really ken kurosara <laughs> like all right <laughs> this sounds like it sounds like if C.B. Sobolski was going to come up with a, a new um, Japanese name so he can do, you know, more comic books, Ken Kurosawa sounds like something he would come up with. <laughs> like, it just, it, it's like the most Japanese name ever. So this is uh, Ken. He's a Japanese-American. Uh, he has a sister named Mariko uh, who is very sick and always, like, in the hospital. And... Their parents are kind of gone. So to earn money to um, finance his sister's like medication and health and all that stuff, Ken basically hires himself as almost like a street thug. Like he goes around, he beats up rival gangs and stuff. Basically gangs will pay him money and then he goes and he beats up other gang members. And eventually he kind of stops, like he backs out of um, the gang. Like the gang that he's helping out, he's like, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of done now. Like I'm not gonna be helping you guys anymore. I have other more important things to deal with. Basically, helping a sister, and so one night he's getting into his car to go meet up with his sister when his car explodes, and uh, basically it turns out that the gang that he was working with aren't too happy with him leaving them for someone else. So they put a car bomb, blow him up. And as he's burning alive, he basically uh, wishes that he could stay alive so that he could protect his sister. And that's how he becomes Spawn. And um, 
I don't know. It's kind of interesting that, like Al Simmons, basically this guy burns alive. I wonder if I said, can you guys not think of some other death that you could have had? Maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe you do something. I mean, I'm not saying do this because this would completely destroy the tone of the comic, or I should say the tone of the manga. But have him like you know, maybe he pulls an Elvis and he dies on the toilet or something. I don't know. It's just like, well, we have Al Simmons, you know dying in a fire maybe we should have our character die in a fire too it's like well i mean you guys could have him die any other way but yeah he dies in a fire and basically he comes back to um life as spawn with his memories kind of jumbled up i thought this was a weird way to go so i get in the comic book at a uh, version of spawn al simmons dies and then he comes back five years later with his memories kind of scrambled and he's basically piecing his memories together and as he's piecing them together we the audience are piecing them together as well we're, we're learning about simmons past as he's learning about it but here it's the opposite here we see him as he is pre-spawn like so we, we know who he is we know what he looks like we know he has a sister that he's trying to take care of and then he dies and then he comes back with amnesia and he's trying to piece together like what his life was like. And it's like that doesn't really work because we we the audience know. And uh this could just be this is, could just be like a personal thing for me, but as a writer, uh I never want the audience to know something that the main character doesn't. I always use I always like to have the main character learn along with the audience. Unless it's something that's going to build tension or dread. Uh, the classic uh, Alfred Hitchcock um, scenario is you have two people in a diner and it blows up. But rather than just having two people in the diner and then it blows up, what you do is you have two people in a diner and then you show the bomb underneath the table. And you, uh, you keep cutting between the two people talking and the bomb and the timer going down lower and lower and lower. And it builds up tension because it's like, oh, this bomb's going to blow up. The audience knows that there's a bomb there, but the, but the two characters don't. Are they going to find out and get out in time? So if you're trying to build tension like that, then it's fine to have the audience know something that the main character or a, you know any character in the series doesn't. But if you're not building that tension, which this doesn't, it doesn't build tension at all. It just makes it kind of like, I don't want to say annoying, but it just kind of bothers me because it's like, why am I trying to, why am I following a character who's trying to learn about his past when we already know everything about his past? Like there's nothing for us to, to like learn with the character. So we can't really empathize with him as much. Because another thing is when a character is like Al Simmons, for example, when he's piecing together his past and he's learning about it little by little, we can empathize with him a lot more because we we are learning with him. And because we're learning with him, we're going on this journey of discovery with him. And that makes us more, um, builds more sympathy towards that character. But if we already knew everything about Al Simmons before he became Spawn, and then after he became Spawn, he's trying to figure out who he is, but we already know, it kind of destroys that, you know? So I didn't, I didn't like that direction that they did. But... Yeah, so basically he dies. He comes back as Spawn seven years later. His memories are kind of messed up. And he's trying to piece together who he is. Thankfully, he learns somewhat quickly. Quickly, Like, this uh, series has three volumes. And he kind of learns who he is and his sister and stuff, like, within the first volume. But his sister is now, like, now seven years later, his sister is healthy. She's fine. She's actually a famous actress. Um, I will say I don't really care for the sister all that much. Like she's not a terrible character, but I don't care for the. So we we get like moments where um there's like an overarching story, but there's also little moments. Like sometimes it'll be a chapter just dedicated to one thing. So like the first chapter will be this demon wants um Mariko, uh, our hero sister, to be his bride. So Spawn has to protect his sister. And then there'd be another one where he's fighting um, Tremor 2, which is basically <laughs> it's basically just a copycat of Tremor from the Spawn comics. And then um, there'll be another one where like his sister's being drugged and she's about to be sacrificed to this god, uh, this Egyptian god, and Spawn has to save her. And it's like, I don't care for the 
adventures where he has to protect her. I get that she's like a big catalyst for why he became Spawn, but I rather just just follow him around and stuff. Like, well, I'll get uh, I'll get I'll touch it a little bit later. So we have some of the classic characters like uh, the clown uh, makes a um, makes uh, an appearance. He starts off kind of talking about uh, Spawn's powers, like he kind of shows Ken somewhat the ropes and kind of guides him a little bit, kind of like in the Spawn comics. So he kind of shows him about the city he kind of shows tells him a little bit about his powers and things like that and then he disappears for a while and then when he comes back he comes back as um the violator i think the viol was it the violator or the vindicator i think the violator he comes back in his demon form and um basically he believes that malboja is like pissed off at him and he wants ken to basically be his bodyguard and he basically is like, you know what? I care. Here, here we'll, we'll, let's do a, a deal. I will train you in your powers, and I will get you as strong as you possibly can. But in return, you have to uh, protect me from Malboja. You have to just basically keep me alive, keep Malboja from from killing me, which I thought was a, a nice, interesting twist. And then we also get a um, another new character. This is uh, Beelzebub, uh, which. Every time now, like because of South Park, every time I think of Beelzebub, I think of Beelzebub, the uh, Canadian uh, devil, <laughs> Beelzebub, or is it Beelzebub, uh, who farts fire? But uh, thankfully, she doesn't fart fire. But anyways, uh, this is uh, Beelzebub. She is a fairy-like creature. Like you can't really tell based off this image, but she's basically a fairy. She's uh, really tiny and she is also really strong and she kind of becomes spawn's new teacher like we start off with the clown kind of teaching him a little bit and then she kind of takes over and starts teaching him and then later on we get like another character that kind of starts teaching spawn but i'm not going to get too much into that uh, i'm actually going to end it here but uh yeah shadows of spawn i'm enjoying it so far um i probably maybe should have like read the full thing before I did a spotlight on it. Uh, but I'm about, uh, there's three volumes. I've read the whole first volume and about halfway through the second, almost near the end of the second. Um, but I'm enjoying it so far. Like, I don't know why it got mixed reviews. So far, it's pretty good. The action scenes are pretty great. I mean, it's basically anyone who, who reads manga, you guys know how the action scenes are right there. They're, they're really kind of drawn out. And that's no different here. So if you like to see fight scenes and you want to see a fight scene with Spawn and you feel like maybe the fight scenes in the Spawn comics are too short, well, here you go. You get actually drawn out multi-page fight scenes in this. Character is interesting, but I feel like he could have been... He could have been more. The character here is... He's almost too much like Al Simmons. And I would have liked to see like a brand new character. This almost just feels like Japanese Al Simmons... And another thing is that, like, this is set in California. And I'm like, why not just set it in Japan? Like, it would have been, like, a cool new setting. Maybe you could have, like, embraced that a little bit more. Like, maybe you could have had, like, the Japanese culture and stuff, like, affect the way, like, you know, the series plays out. Maybe you could have had, like, your version of, like, Twitch and Sam. But they're, like, you know, Japanese officials. So the personalities would be a lot different because of that. Maybe because it's in Japan, you could have taken on, like, the Japanese uh, folklore more. You could have had, like, Spawn fighting these demons and characters that are based more on Japanese, like, yokais and stuff like that, like, onis, um, and just, like, you know, like, Japanese demons and Japanese ghosts and Japanese underworld. And just that, that would have been, like, a cool, interesting take. But instead, you're pretty much just copying everything from the spawn comics like everything you know it's said in america like the spawn comics are i know the spawn comics are in new york but still like it's said in america and it just it would have been cool like you have you have tremor 2 in here and it's like well instead of tremor 2 which is just a rip off off tremor why not have like an oni or something like embrace the fact that you're a manga and have a Japanese character, a Japanese spawn in Japan with Japanese demons and stuff. Like that would have just been like a really cool, interesting, original take on the spawn series. And instead, it just kind of feels like you're just copying everything that's happening in the comics. And I would have liked it if it went in a different direction.
Kind of like, I mean, I like how you did like Beelzebub. I think that was a cool thing. Do that with your main character. Make him fully Japanese. Make it take place in Japan. Um, give him a, a different backstory. He doesn't have to die in a fire. Have it be something else. Maybe uh, maybe there's some other reason he, he becomes Spawn rather than, you know, because of a loved one. I mean, a loved one is easy and I don't want to say cliche, but it, it's easy to draw sympathy from that because everyone can kind of, everyone can... Um, can understand that, like, you know, doing whatever you can for a loved one, but embrace being different, do something different. Maybe he, he, he becomes spawned because of some other reason. Change up his personality a bit. Like this character is a bit also too similar to Al Simmons or what little I've read of the spawn comics. He reminds me too much of that. Like he's kind of like the broody kind of dark, um, kind of spying on his loved ones from the shadows kind of thing. And it's like, I don't know, like, Maybe it'd be kind of interesting to see a character who actually embraces the the spawn powers. Like, holy crap, I have the powers of hell at my commands. Like, let's go nuts with this. Uh, maybe someone who actually enjoys their powers, like, rather than seeing it as a curse. I don't know. Go different. Do some crazy stuff with it. Go wild. I would have loved to see that. Instead, it's almost like we're basically going to just copy the American version and just change it just a teeny tiny little bit, but still keep it too much like that. And it's like, you know what, if you were doing a manga on Al Simmons, then okay, I can understand staying close to the comic books. But you're doing a manga on a brand new character that's just set in the same universe, but it's still a brand new character. And I mean, you you already created a, a, a new character with Beelzebub. You created a new character based off of a zombie spawn. So just go wild and ha have your spawn be completely different. Uh, maybe instead of the clown, maybe there's another demon that helps him out. I mean, you had the Beelzebub. You could have just had Beelzebub from the beginning. But maybe maybe there's another demon instead that, that decides, you know. Like, I don't know. Just go wild with it. With that said, it feels like I'm kind of ragging on the series. I did enjoy it so far. I uh, So, again, got to finish it. But I am, I am enjoying what I'm reading. I do like it. And uh, if you guys are a fan of Spawn, check it out. Uh, if you guys are a fan of Supernatural, like, mangas check it out <laughs> but uh yeah that's shadows of spawn hope you guys enjoyed if you guys have any other recommendations let me know if there's any uh other uh mangas based off of american comic book characters let me know i don't know if they ever did anything on witchblade i know they did an anime i don't know if they ever did a manga but uh if there are like any mangas out there based off of comic book characters and i'm not talking about like um uh Dojinshis, I can't say that word, but like, like fan mangas. I'm talking about like official mangas. If there are any out there, let me know and I'll, I'll check them out. Um, if there are any mangas like this, like I'm always, I always love mangas and comics that deal with like demons and hunting them and stuff like that. Like I've always been a fan of like the Constantines, the, um, uh, Criminal, Macabre, The Cow Chronicles. Uh, I love like like Helsing. I I I love stuff where it's like, you know, we got demons, we got the occult, and then we got these characters like hunting them down, or they have like the kind of demonic powers like Spawn. So if you guys have any series like that, you guys recommend, let me know. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Oh, please, if you guys haven't, please. Uh, subscribe. I'm trying to see if I can hit 500 subscribers by the end of the year. So please subscribe. Hit the bell for notification. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Feel free to comment down below. If you're watching this on BitChute, please subscribe. I'm seeing if maybe I can get 100 subscribers on BitChute by the end of the year. But I uh, do all that cool stuff. Uh, share this out there with people, please. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys take care. And I hope to see you guys next time. Later.